Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Barakatuhu. Ramadan Mubarak. Won't be able to say that too much longer. But may you have a blessed Ramadan. Khitamuhu uh, misk. And may the end of it be sealed with musk. Uh, we greet Imam Tahir. And it's always a pleasure to be with Imam Tahir, even virtually. But the virtual is only our bodies. The hearts are, are actually in touch with each other. Arwah junudun mujannada. So the, the spirits are arranged hosts. And that was before we came into this physical world. So the spirits have their own ways of communicating directly without the need for uh, any sort of uh, virtual uh, means in between. Alhamdulillah, MCC, as you know, is the people's masjid. And uh, it's a very uh, beloved institution, beloved to my heart, I'm sure beloved, as obviously to Imam Tahir's heart, he shared a few anecdotes that clearly indicate that it's beloved to the hearts of everyone who's joining us. And MCC is uh, doing all sorts of work. And not just there in Pleasanton, the reach of MCC extends throughout the Bay Area and beyond. It certainly extends into Oakland via the various collaborations that have occurred with the Lighthouse Mosque, be that in Sakat distribution, be that in supporting very generously the uh, thrift store that the Lighthouse was running for a little while, and in many other tangible and intangible ways. Uh, I think it's very important for us to, and I'm, I'm not going to say anything until I encourage you to spend some more. Uh, as Imam Tahir said, the risk doesn't come from the economy. The economy in reality is just an illusion. This is one thing the coronavirus showed us. You know, some of our people, we won't say who, were boasting as late as February, we have the greatest economy in human history. And the greatest economy in human history was undone in two weeks by something so small you can't even see it. And so it's, a, it's an illusion, an illusion of strength. The reality of the human and the human condition is given clearly to Allah, uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and we'll just mention two verses, the many verses in the Quran, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ The human has been created weak. We are weak, our systems are weak, our economics are weak, our politics are weak. Look how quickly this, this country is sliding into authoritarianism. And look at the divisions in this country, look at the racial divides. On the one hand, a couple of white guys can uh, stalk down a black jogger with a t-shirt and, and, and short pants on in broad daylight, says a, mur a burglar, like no backpack to put the proper stolen property in, no crowbars to get into the house, just a t-shirt and short, shoot him in cold blood and spend two months uncharged. On the other hand, a white mob can wa walk into the Michigan state capitol with swastikas and assault rifles, rifles and nothing happens. Like reverse that, have, have a couple black guys armed with a shotgun and a 57, 357 magnum, magnum chase down a white jogger in broad daylight and shoot the, the, the guy, what's going to happen to those black guys? They're going to walk around for two months with no charges. They're going to put them under the jail day one and get a, a black mob or even an Arab mob or Pakistani mob with nice beards like Imam Tahir's beards and get a bunch of assault rifles and go into any state capital and threaten the governor, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going to uh, read them their Second Amendment rights, I can guarantee you. But look how it's unraveling. But Allah is Al-Qawi. Allah is Al-Qawi. Allah is Al-Aziz. Allah is al-mutakabbir. 
Allah is al-Jabbar, Allah is al-Qahar. This is, this is the reality. So Allah says the humans create a weak and anything we do is weak. In reality, even if it portrays the illusion of strength, and Allah tells us, Ya ayyuhan nas, not the Muslims, all of humanity, antumul fuqara'u ilallahi wallahu huwa al-ghaniyun hamid. You are all in desperate need of Allah, and the law is free of all need, worthy of all praise. That's the reality of our condition. So the economy doesn't give you wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you wealth. And Allah Ta'ala withholds the wealth from whomsoever he pleases. As Imam Tahir said, some people are making money hand over fist in this, in this uh, coronavirus. Everyone's wishing they would have bought 3M stock. 3M makes the N95 mask. They wish they bought 3M stock like three months ago. Like, why didn't I buy 3M stock? SubhanAllah. Three, if you if you if you you have some three M stock, your stock is probably quadrupled. Allah Allah gives the risk to whomsoever He please, and He withdraws the risk from whomever um, whomsoever He please. And He says in a hadith Qudsi an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an an Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or, or, or it's direct from the Prophet uh, I, I think it's Hadith Qudsi fi ma yarwihi an Rabbi Azza wa Jal Anfiq ya ibn Adama unfiq alik Spend, O child of Adam, I will spend on you Anfiq ya ibn Adama unfiq alik Spend, O child of Adam, I will spend on you so our, our receiving our risk is conditional on our continuing to spend. So you, if everyone out there has some sort of cash flow, they've already given a lot of those checks and all of your tax filers, so most of you got a check for, for what, $1,500 or $1,200 and $500 for every child, give some of that to MCC and Allah will continue to give you. Anfiq ya ibn Adam, ya ibn Adam, unfiq alik. Spend, O child of Adam, I will spend on you. I will spend on you. And this is Ramadan, when the Prophet ﷺ was exceptionally generous. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwada nasi wa ajwada ma yukunu fi Ramadan. هنا يلقاه جبريل فيدرسه القرآن فلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هنا يلقاه جبريل في رمضان ويدرسه القرآن أجود في الخير من الريح المرسلة he was more generous in Ramadan when Jibril came to review view the Quran with him than the free free blowing man عليه النبى this is a great opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't look at social isolation as a bad thing. Look at social isolation as an opportunity for divine intimacy. The great sage and scholar Ibn Atta'illah, rahimahullah ta'ala, and one of his aphorisms, he said, "Ma nafa'al qalba mithlu uzlatin yadkhulu biha maydan fikra." Nothing benefits the heart like isolation that enters the person along that enters the person into the realms of reflection. So we have a lot of time to think, but that reflection should be about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the, un the, the uncertainty and trials and tribulations of this world that we will in inevitably encounter. This is the dunya. This is the abode of trials and tribulations. This is what it is, brothers and sisters. Don't be surprised by it. We've just been spoiled. 
humanity's been spoiled. The last time something like this happened, which was much, much worse, was a century ago, the 1918 so-called Spanish flu, so-called because it, it started here and our soldiers brought it to Europe. And then it was derogatorily attributed to Spain. Anyway, 26 million dead. Coronavirus, as of right now, quarter million dead. That's a quarter million too many. But compare a quarter million to 26 million. You know, before that, the, the Black Plague of several centuries, many centuries ago, but in recorded history and devastating the heartland of the Muslim world, 200 million dead. Think about that. 200 million dead, over half of the Earth's population at the time. Over half of the Earth's population at the time. Wiped out. This is the reality. As Muslims, we know that uh, the, the plague of Justinian, 50 million dead. Again, at that time, a large percentage of the world's population gone, and the vestiges of that plague afflicted the Muslims. So you had Ta'un al-Amwas, Amyas, excuse me, Ta'un al-Amyas, that took the likes of Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah, and Shuhrajil, and many other of the luminaries of the companions in present-day Palestine, or uh, present-day Jordan, the Jordan River Valley. So, this is, this is the reality. This is the reality of the human condition. We need a law. We need a law, brothers and sisters, whether there's plague, whether there's pestilence, whether there's good times, bad times. We need a law more in the good times than we do in the bad times. Or we should be turning to a law, excuse me, we should be turning to Allah more in the good times than we do in the bad times. Why? What does Allah say? Ta'aruf illallahi firraqa yarifka fishidda. Introduce yourself to Allah during the good times, the easy times. He will know you during the difficult times. So the easy times were the times we should have been, we should have been getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, introducing ourselves. And you introduce yourself through your prayer, through your fasting, through your awrad and your afkar, your supplications, your invocations. This is how we introduce ourselves to our Lord. And he already knows us, but it's for our benefit. It's for our benefit. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless us to carry the lessons of Ramadan through the year. And they, how do we do that? By continuing to do the things we were doing in Ramadan. Continuing to pray Qiyam al-Layl or Tahajjud. Continuing to read our Quran. Continuing to fast, not continuously, that might be a burden, but Mondays and Tuesdays, the white days, the three white full moon days. So continuing the good practices, as they say, there's nothing to it but to do it. Islam is a beautiful religion, brothers and sisters. One of the beauties is that it allows us to deviate from our normal pattern, but still know that we're following the prophetic guidance. That's beautiful. So we have a precedent for not praying in the masjid during the Times of heavy, heavy rain, the Prophet Sallallahu he had the Mu'adhan tell the people, Sallu fi buyutikum. And Ibn Abbas after him, radiallahu anhumah, gave the same order to the Mu'adhan in his time. And when questioned, he said, one better than me who preceded me gave this order. Pray in your houses so you don't get muddy and, and cold and you get sick from the being drenched and soaked in this heavy rain. We have the precedent of Tarawi being scattered, many different jamaats. Before Umar gathered the people, radiallahu anhu, behind Ubay bin, Ubay bin Kaab, radiallahu anhu, there's a precedent there. It's not the norm, but these are not normal times. 
We have Imam Tahir said something in another context, but it's very beautiful if you ponder, or ponder on it. The whole earth has been made a masjid for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu We can pray anywhere and we're in the masjid. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. The entire earth has been made a masjid for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can pray anywhere and we'll be in the masjid. La ilaha illallah. This is, the, this is from the beauty of Islam. This is from the flexibility of Islam. And we're not comfortable a lot of times. We're used to the norm. But getting out of our comfort zone is one of the great means and to encourage spiritual growth. As the scholars of spiritual training say, to oppose what your soul inclines towards is the essence of its treatment. As we get comfortable, go to the masjid, it's more social than religion. We get there, we hang out with the fellas before salat, for having iftar, it's a, it's a big social gathering. And, and the, the imam has to break up the conversations and get us in a mind, uh, in a frame of mind to pray. We're just chit-chatting, catching up, chomping down, mashallah. And we get comfortable with that. Then after the prayer, we're in the parking lot for another half an hour, chit-chatting after we're in the masjid. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. My point is we get used to that and we get comfortable with that. And when something comes that disrupts that, it provides us an opportunity for spiritual growth because our hawa and our nafs become accustomed to something and they don't want us to leave it. But in leaving it, we subordinate them. And this brings our deeper spiritual powers to the fore. So it's a beautiful thing. This is our religion. There's a silver line in every storm cloud that may darken the sky of Islam temporarily. We just look for that silver lining. La ilaha illallah. May Allah bless all of you, give you tawfiq, give you taysir, give you kabul. So again, there's nothing to it but to do. Just do the good things you are doing and try to find someone to do them with. Even if it's virtual, just call up. You know, it's time for our weird latif that we were doing in Ramadan and we committed to do it after. Did you read your juz today? You know, uh, start a, a club like some of the sisters, beautiful practice. They finish their Quran every month, a khatam of Quran, then they read du'as. And usually they write out the du'a, so it's a very specific du'a they don't forget. And they, they pray for the people that ask them for du'a. This, and they do this every month, every month. And so we need brothers to start a group like that. We need the youth to start a group like that. This is where the good comes from. This are, these are the foundations of good. good. Good is built on a platform, on a foundation. And these acts of righteous, pious people provide that platform. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah give us kabul. May Allah ta'ala elevate our station. May Allah elevate your station. May Allah... Bless all of the wonderful people working to make this program possible. May Allah bless all of the MCC, the board, the teachers, the staff, the administrative personnel, wonderful, wonderful people deserving of your support. Deserving of your support. So brothers and sisters, again, I'll end as I started encouraging you to spin. And fiqh. Yabna Adam. Unfiqh. Alek, spend, O oh child of Adam, I will spend on you. So may Allah give you tawfiq, taysir, qabul, inayah, wa rimayah, wa hidayah, wa al-himayah, wa al-hidayah. Wa alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa alihi, wa sahbihi, wa salam, tasliman, kathira, bismillah, rahman, rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا اول ما شئت نجيم اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمع المرحومه وتفرقنا من بعد تفرق معصوما 
ولا تدع عندنا ولا فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم تقبل منا زدنا ولا تنقصنا اللهم أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين سيدنا حبيبنا وكرة عيوننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تقبل منا ما قدمنا إليك في شهرك المعظم رمضان من الصلاة والزكاة والقيام والصيام وتلاوة القرآن فتقبل هذا منا يا, منا يا الله تقبل هذا منا يا الله تقبل هذا منا يا الله اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتوقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة اللهم اللهم بارك لنا وارحمنا وانصرنا واحفظنا في هذه الأيام أيام الأزمة كورونا فيروس يا الله فحفظنا من هذا الشر يا الله وارفعه عنا يا الله وارفعه عنا يا الله وارفعه عنا يا الله وما دام معنا يا الله فاجعلنا من الصابرين فما فجعلنا من الصابرين والصابرات والقاني والعابدين والعابدات والزاهدين والزاهدات والصالحين والصالحات والمتوكلين عليك ومتوكلات يا الله إنا نسألك الهدى والتوقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم تقبل منا ها نحن واقفون عند بابك يا الله في شهرك يا الله فلا تردنا يا الله خائبين بل ردنا سالمين غالمين فالحين أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلت رحمة للعالمين اللهم الحقنا بالصالحين اللهم الحقنا الحقنا بالمتقين اللهم الحقنا بالمجاهدين اللهم الحقنا بالصابرين اللهم اللهم الحقنا بالتائبين اللهم اللهم الحقنا من مع الذين يعملون في خدمة هذا الدين يا رب العالمين نسألك ذلك ونتوسل إليك بكل بجميع الأعمال الخيرات قام بها عبادك يا الله في شهرك رمضان المعظم نتوسل إليك بهذه الأعمال الصالحات يا الله بكل ما قام به عبادك الصالحين في شهرك شهرك رمضان بكل صلاة وبكل كل كرش من الزكاة وفي بكل آيات من القرآن وبكل توبة وكل استغفارة وبكل تسبيحة وبكل حلقلة وبكل تهليلة وبكل عمل للخير قام بها أحد من خلقك يا الله نتوسل إليك بذلك يا الله ونسألك القبول يا الله ونسألك الإخلاص يا الله وزيادة الإخلاص يا الله ودامة الإخلاص يا الله وزيادة زيادة الخيرات يا الله في شهرك ربما رمضان يا الله وفي آخر شهرك رمضان في أيام الوليال العشر يا الله نسألك في هذا اليوم يا الله أن تتقبل منا وزدنا ولا تنقصنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا وكرة عيوننا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم من اللهم من توفيته منا يا الله فتوفه على الإيمان ومن أحيته من يا الله من منا يا الله فأحيه على الإسلام 
أنت مولانا يا الله نسألك من فضلك وجودك وخيرك وسقائك وكرمك ورحمتك أن توفقنا إلى ما أنت تحب وترضاه يا الله وفقنا يا الله إلى ما أنت تحب وترضاه يا الله وفقنا يا الله بما أنت تحبه يا وترضاه يا الله اللهم إننا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب العمل الذي يبلغنا أو يقربنا حبك اللهم إننا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب العمل الذي يقربنا إلى حبك اللهم إننا نسألك حبك وبيحب وبيحب وحب من يحبك وحب العمل يحب العمل الذي يبلغنا حبك نسألك ذلك يا الله يسألك ذلك يا الله يسألك نسألك ذلك يا الله في شهرك رمضان المعظم اللهم إن اللهم اجعل في قلوبنا نورا وفي أبصارنا نورا وفي أسماعنا نورا وفي بين أيدينا نورا ومن خلفنا نورا وعن يميننا نورا عن شمائلنا نورا ومن فوقنا نورا ومن تحتنا نورا وفي جلدنا نورا وفي لحمنا نورا وفي دمنا نورا وفي عظامنا نورا وفي شعرنا نورا وفي كل ذرة في هذه الأجسام يا الله نورها يا الله نورها يا الله نورها نورها يا الله بحقك 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 يا الله نسألك ذلك يا الله بحبك لنبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما اللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من رمضان اللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من رمضان اللهم باركنا فيما بقي من رمضان أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة استعين بالشرط المستقيم في الذين نفت عليهم ونحن الله